when it comes to your mindset, uh, name three things that you think are your strengths mm -hmm. and why you think they're your strengths and three things that you think you could improve in. Oh man, my strengths and like the track wise and track wise or yeah. just oh okay. So I would say my one strength. Hmm. One wow, this is a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. So physique, yeah, like physical wise, I would say my one strength right now is me controlling my breath, and I know that sounds really weird, but. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I since i've been doing yoga i've learned the importance of breath control and you know obviously you know your breath is your life force like that's your being mm -hmm. like if you don't yeah. have breath anymore you don't have life so to i use that now in my training i use that when i lift and i've seen such a big difference so i would say that's definitely one strength is understanding my breath my second strength i would say it's my self-awareness like of yeah. of my body i guess my body awareness. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm really good at knowing what's wrong before my coach can even say anything. Um, okay. Yeah. And my third strength. <sighs> um, I would say my uh, demeanor. Um, I okay. guess, yeah, my demeanor when it comes to, uh, you know, like, no, I say, I would say my optimism. There you go. I say optimism. Yeah. I'm very optimistic. So if somebody comes to me with something negative at practice, I'd be like, well, you know, you don't have to look at it that way. You can look at it this way, and you can have a different result. So I would say that. And my three weaknesses. Hmm. I feel like sometimes I, I have really like bad social anxiety so i close myself okay. out a lot mm -hmm. um okay. i would say that's one of my weaknesses i need to just kind of i'm still working on not harping too much on the things that might go wrong mm -hmm. like even though yes i can give advice to people but you know practicing it is a whole different thing so that that yeah. that is one thing that i would i would say my weakness my second weakness is not getting in my head too much at practice. Like ball training and me don't mix <laughs> oil and water. <laughs> yeah, but I'm really trying to work on this year embracing fall training. So I would say like yeah. that was one of my weaknesses. Um, okay. <sighs> yeah, I can't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I that's fine. That um, one of the sticky points for all athletes is, you know, funding or sponsorship. So um, that's mm -hmm. something that I find really, really interesting. So in terms of your journey, so uh, research, I did a bit of research. So you're sponsored by Nike. Um, is that correct? Nike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you talk mm -hmm. to us about the benefit of being um, sponsored by them and how they've helped you um, so far in your career? Yeah, um, I would definitely say the security is one thing that I appreciate the most because when you're sponsored, you're in a lot of doors. Like I having access to meets, um, having access to treat to tr certain treatments and um, you know physio people and stuff like that. So I would say the safety is definitely a pro when it comes to that. But I mean, it comes with the cost though. I have a lot of requirements in my contract that I need to abide by to keep those benefits. So. That's one. That's I guess two things. Okay, well, when, and when it comes to that, because we've had this discussion um, in the past with some of our guests mm -hmm. who are athletes, mm -hmm. and in terms of meeting requirements, so does it work that if you don't if you don't meet this, then they're going to pull it away from you? How how does it work exactly? So I'll do I'll do the quarantine for example. In twenty twenty, yeah. obviously that's still a con in my contract year, so I need to buy it by the rules. And one of my rules is that I need 10 meets throughout the whole year. So that's okay. one strict thing. Or if, and if I don't have those 10 meets, then I'm going to get a reduction in my contract. So I'm going to be losing money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it works like that. If like now, if I don't place like top 10 in the world, then I'll get a reduction in my contract. Like there's a lot of little fine okay. prints that come with the, the, the benefits that we get. 
I see. And, then, and when it comes to the meets, let's just say, because someone has, has got, they've done nine meets and they've got like a little niggle, are they more likely to run because they have to fill the contract requirement? Yeah. Wow. You, do, you, do you remember the race? Um, it was 2019 um, Prefontaine at Stanford. You saw mm. Shelly and Fraser Price. She jogged. She needed to run in that meet because it's in her contract. It's in our contract to participate okay. at Prefontaine, Prefontaine as Nike athletes. So, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, this is crazy. Yeah. yeah, my head's all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I, I've got one more question. So, this is why, I, like, it's, it's it's information like this why I really love doing this podcast because you've got you've got young impressionable athletes who just want to get sponsored and that's what they're working towards it's about being sponsored and having that feeling it's almost that ego boost that i'm sponsored by nike i'm sponsored by adidas etc but they yeah. don't know about some of the stipulations they don't know and you know the information that you are providing is so invaluable um so i really appreciate that um do you ever feel the pressure of course, every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> like this is my livelihood. Like this is this is this is how I eat. This is how my family eats. Like the, the, you know, this is the, uh, you know, this is it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Of course, I definitely feel the pressure every single day. That's I mean, I, that's kind of like sometimes where anxiety comes, where my anxiety would come from, wow. or my depression comes mm. from. It's like, oh my gosh, that feeling of like this could be taken away from me at any mm. moment. So I need to make sure I'm doing everything I need to do to. A, yeah. you know accommodate what i need to do you know so yeah definitely i yeah i'm crazy man yeah of course what, <laughs> and one last thing does that include media obligations as well mm -hmm. wow okay mm -hmm. yeah well like that's it's, it's different i feel like it's different for every athlete okay though. like not i don't feel like okay. every yeah not every athlete has the same context. yeah yeah, yeah everybody has different context. yeah yeah um but obviously the high level yeah people like you know Shelly and elaine yeah. like all of yeah. them like they Ha, you know have media obligations and we have media obligations in our contracts as well but you know okay. it's kind of different when you're making it a lot more money <laughs> wow mm -hmm. i can imagine um i want to talk a little bit about social media how how do you find social media for you because i know with some people they may have um the comments the comment section they're not they haven't received any good comments and stuff like that mm -hmm. how, how do you find social media <laughs> Uh, social media is funny. I mean, I've I've had like Twitter since twenty eleven. I mean, two thousand eleven. Like I've okay. I've I've been in it for this social media stuff for a long time. So I enjoy social media. It's comical to me. So the comment, these new like yeah. new followers and like new support and all this stuff. It's like I appreciate. It. I love it so 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 much. But it's just kind of yeah. sometimes. I honestly, if I'm being honest. I haven't said this on, on another interview yet, but it's kind of weird how this, my new support sometimes, I don't know, you said like no drama stuff, but <laughs> this isn't drama. <laughs> the, my new support comes from people not liking, you know, another athlete. And I, that's just like, why? Like mm. this, you know, yeah, like she, okay. she, she's a human being. Like I'm, you know, I'm not an angel. Yeah. Like y'all don't have to make me seem yeah. like I'm just this, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I have my faults yeah. too. So that 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 part is where I'm like, I would say after pre, I got I kind of got sad about that too. Like I was kind of depressed about that too. Um, like I appreciated mm -hmm. the new attention, but it was also overwhelming because I was like, are y'all coming over here to really support me and get to know me, or are y'all just coming over here, you know, to bash somebody else? And I'm not with that. I'm not with yeah. bashing nobody. You know, like that's not that's not me. Yeah. So. Yeah, I would say that conflict definitely comes with the attention. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. interesting. So obviously with that athlete, so we've spoken about the athlete. Um, I mm -hmm. wholeheartedly support them because I still feel that, um, you know, we're allowed to, to make mistakes 
and right for sure. yeah we're allowed, yeah exactly we're allowed to make mistakes and regardless of you know what they've done they are still um a world-class athlete and will definitely talented. it's extremely extremely oh. talented um like yeah. yeah so i guess my next question is <laughs> so are you are you seeing or do you feel that there are almost social engineers so almost like within the media that are trying to create a um oh what do they used to call it in wrestling that like a face being like the good guy and the heel be the heel, <laughs> and a heel. yeah the heel so yeah. do you think that yeah. um they are <laughs> subtly creating that without going into too much detail and what media no yeah yes. yeah do you yeah, do you think yeah, that is yeah, being yeah. created yeah. like you're the face and they are the heel yeah. yeah, straight. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's, we'll leave it at that. Like, yeah, <laughs> and that's not the case, y'all. Yeah. I'm saying that's right now. It's not the case. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how is it like um, on the circuit um, with athletes? Because I know, I know we've in years gone by. There's some athletes that don't get on with this athlete, and this person gets on with this athlete. How is it like? Because I, I myself, I've done track, and mm -hmm. most people tend to get on with each other. Yeah. How is it like? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, for me personally, I, I, my my go to always with a lot of situations is you make the best mm. out of the experience that you're in. So I'm gonna make the best out of my yeah. experience, whether that's like you know yeah. saying hi to you or like complimenting you. You know, like I that's that seeing other people happy makes me happy. So I'm okay. gonna you know. I, and I understand the competition mode too, though. Like, I'm not going to talk to one of my competitors while they're, you know, like warming up or something like that because they're getting in their zone. Like, I don't, I don't know their, yeah. you know, mechanisms, but you know, if somebody's okay. willing to talk to me, I'll talk to them. Like, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm really friendly. I'm pretty open. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I have any issues with, you know, anybody or yeah. Um, one question I wanted to ask you is about the lineage of U.S. female sprinting. So the depth in, you know, the history of, you know, female sprinting in the U.S. is is crazy. Um, and, I, you know, my favorite U.S. sprinter, I think, growing up was, um, you know, Marion Jones. Um, she mm -hmm. was just, oh, my gosh, like her technique was just so good so so good um i absolutely love the technique um so do you ever feel that pressure not necessarily at the um you know the not so important meets but at the olympics and at the world champs do you ever feel that wow you know i, I really need to represent um the the usa do you ever feel that um yeah of course i mean i i making the usa team is you know like really rare. You, like you said, there are so many elite sprinters in the United States. <laughs> like so many, you always have to be in your A game, and there's always somebody else coming up that's new and wants to be the shine. You know, you know, new new face. So yeah, I would say definitely the, just the hard work I put in makes me want to rep the you know rep USA. You know, love my family has for me and like wanting to see me at my biggest you know best potential. Um, that makes makes me want to represent the USA, you know, my fans and all that stuff. They might make me want to re rep the USA. Like, I feel like the community that I have and like the support system that I have makes me want to rep um, mm. USA the most. Do you ever visualize your races before they happen? Hmm. Yes, in a way. Um, hmm. Yeah, definitely. I <laughs> so cool you asked that. But yeah, so when we do our pre meet, we go to the track and as I'm running my warm up lap I think about, you know, what the atmosphere might look like and, you know, how I might feel and stuff like that. Um, and then when I do my block starts, I definitely visualize what I wanna do when I push out of the blocks on the race. I um yeah, visualize like, because I have a routine before I get in the blocks. I and everybody doesn't have to have a routine, but I do it just to make sure I'm controlling myself and my breath and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. so yeah, definitely, I definitely do visualize before. Okay, so I was watching um, a podcast and they were speaking about you, and they described you as an underdog. And 
the way that they described you as being an underdog is because you know you've got the Shelley and you've got the Elaine Thompson so you've got the kind of what quote unquote the tier ones and they described you as somebody that always had um always has potential and still can go faster and they mentioned how you know you went down to 1098 and then you broke your pb again all the way down to 1083 so now the gentleman he kind of said now you're almost like an elite athlete so you're almost at tier two now so my question to you would be are you are you <laughs> can you still be classed as an underdog if you're running 1083 <laughs> uh <-oh. laughs> um you know what i i i'm not a really big speaker because anything anything is possible anything can happen so I just try to put the work in and just see what happens. Mm. <laughs> Honestly, like I, I don't even really like you know care about the tears yeah, and all that yeah. stuff. Like that doesn't doesn't define me as an athlete. Mm. Like I know where I can mm -hmm. go and where I'm headed. Like you know, so other people's definition of where I might be is not me. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I'm very very secure in where I am yeah. and my talents and stuff. So I. Yeah, they're gonna see. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Talk to us a little bit about how it felt being at the Olympics and being at the start line mm -hmm. before <laughs> the hundred meter women's yeah. Final. Oh my gosh, that was such a surreal moment. I was like, wow, I'm really. I can honestly say I'm I'm a very appreciative person, so I find joy. In, like I said, I find joy in everything that I try to do. So whether it's a loss, I'm like, okay, what did I learn from this situation? So yeah. going into the Olympics, I made a, actually a video, video diary of myself in, a, um, in like a little um, a hot tub in the training center that we had out there. And I was just like, kind of like saying, dang T, like you, you made it. Like you're, you're always going to be an Olympian. Like you're in your first, so like I said, tomorrow's going to be your first Olympic race ever. Like embrace this moment, like cherish this moment. Like, you know, like, like, oh, I was just yeah. so happy and excited for, for myself and like all, all the hard work that I, I went through. And I just really wanted to document that moment for me, that surreal moment. But the first race, I was just really excited. I was also kind of tired too, because it was, you know, morning time and all that stuff out there. And yeah. obviously my sleep was off, but yeah, well, I was just, and then the final, when they did the light show, I was like, here, I was like, here we go again. <laughs> because at Worlds, they did the same thing for us in the 100. Yeah. And I was like, wow, like you've been, my thought process is now, since I went to Worlds my first time, and then my Olympics, my, my you know, my first time. Yeah. When I was on the line for the final, I was like, you have been here before. You have made a world championship final. You have raced all these women before. You know their talents but you are just as talented. Like you're literally meant to be here. So just, you know, have fun and try your best. And that's, you know, at the time, that's what I did. I tried my best. So, yeah. <laughs> I have to commend you um, for getting to the final. And I think it really needs to be um, inflated because women's women's 100 meters in the last decade has improved so much the women are getting so much faster and for you to get to that final and you you are running with the very very best some of the very best of all time so i really think that that needs to be um, commended and you need to be applauded for that um one thing that came out thank you um no problem one thing that came out was the track and how fast it was um talk to us about the track like how, how did it feel was it fast or was it just overrated yeah, just talk to, to us a little bit about that no i i definitely think it's yeah. fast like it's it's an olympic stadium and it was beautiful out there oh my gosh it was so beautiful um the stadium is is huge i can't wait to go back honestly um but yeah i would mm. definitely say it's i mean it's a mondo track too so it's definitely mm. definitely fast has some buoyancy and everything yeah and then talking about that actually because the We've had, we've, we spoke to Montel Douglas about this and um, the spikes, do you, does, do you think the spikes make any difference to the performance <laughs> at all? <laughs> or do you think it's just people are just looking for an excuse why women are getting faster? Uh, I feel like, 
like i mean there's science behind the spice like of course we're we're yeah. evolving like we're mm. humans like we're we're going to yeah. we're going to get faster regardless we're going to like technology is definitely uh making that process a lot faster but the spikes yeah. i mean we're still running like that's still that's yeah. still talent that's still hard work the spikes may be a uh, added bonus maybe yeah mm. but i feel like it's all about how you use it too because not everybody yeah. not everybody likes the spikes mm. too not everybody can run with them so it's like just gotta do what you need so just to confirm you're 24 right and your personal best is ten eight three. So um yeah, this is this is mind blowing. So um can we talk about how did you feel um when you you know um finished the line and you saw that you ran ten eight three because honestly that is an unbelievable time and considering your age, you're only gonna get faster. So just talk to us about that. Well, thank you. <laughs> but <laughs> um I honestly and it's really, I appreciate you guys for having this, um, you know, mind talk because the day of pre, well, I would say maybe a couple of days before pre, all I can think about was finishing my season. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait till my season's mm -hmm. done. Like, this is my last race of the season. Oh, I'm so tired. Like, Tokyo really drained me out. Like, I was, I was really tired. And honestly, because it was two weeks in between the Olympic final and pre. Yeah. The first week we got back, I was really depressed, like really, really, really de sad. And I was like, why am I so sad? But I had a reason also because of uh, Cameron Burrell's uh, um, untimely death yeah. and how yeah. that happened. It really just made me, it took me aback. And I was like, wow, like that's one of us like that. He, you know, that's, that's one of us. I was really sad about mm. that. And I still am to this day, but that first week really hit me hard. And then the second week, the week before pre, I just kind of had to turn it on, like turn on that like light of like, okay, T, like this is the last race of the season. Let's get it done. Let's put this work in this last week and let's see what, what happens. So I started, I was having some great block starts, like runs were great, times were great. And when I went to pre, I was like, I put a post on my fence and I was like, I just really want to in my season but i'm gonna I'm still turn up right yeah. and when i was doing my block starts and warming up i was just so happy i was just so grateful just to be in this opportunity being in that race um you know just have a have a lane like all, i was really appreciative so like i really brought that joy and that appreciation into that race and my mindset was really mm -hmm. different in that race like i was more i was a lot more calm um and i had one focus so my i like you said with with this this conversation my mental switch so my performance got better okay. and i was like all right let me let me start implementing this for real let me really start honing in on my you know mental health for real focusing on that to get my results on the track i think i think people don't realize how important well elite athletes do but mm -hmm. in general people don't realize how important the mind is to execute your best performances when you're competing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much so. I, especially now that I'm with yoga, um, like I said, the breath work and the mindfulness is meditation. All of that is really important to me because it keeps me grounded. It keeps me yeah. sane. <laughs> like it, it definitely helps me control my emotions, everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to talk to you about, uh, about breath work. So, this is something that's come up for me personally the last say 18 to 24 months um i've tried mm -hmm. it <laughs> i'm not the best at it <laughs> but um i definitely <laughs> i mean it's your practice it, you make it what it is honestly it's your practice like there's no standard there's no standard at all yeah no nah, yeah. it's true it's true um and i definitely want to do because i've i've definitely i've delved into some of the um it's a Taoist, Taoism and they talk a lot yeah. they talk a lot about um breath work and how important it is there's even there's types of breath work where if you've got different pains in parts of your body that you can actually stop mm -hmm. that and you can heal yeah. yourself and you can heal, you heal yourself yeah yes. it's crazy yes. crazy so um I, I was looking into that um i guess mm -hmm. my question to you is would you what what initially inspired you to become 
a, a yoga instructor or a certified yoga instructor yeah um actually i started yoga in high school Jeez, wow okay. so yeah it was kind of like a thing that i that my coach made me do just for my flexibility and help me on the track so I'm like, okay i'll do it then in college i started to venture out and go to yoga studios my like outside of ut yeah i love that experience yeah, yeah. started to do more hot yoga and all that stuff yeah. but then after quarantine I was like, I need to find something else that I'm passionate and I I love because mm. you know track is not gonna last at all. You know, my whole life I'm only gonna be in track for yeah. however many more years, mm. and then what else am I gonna do in my life? So I was like, you know what, yeah. yoga is something I really loved, and I found I found myself going back to it every time I had a problem in my life. So I was like, there's something here. So I was like, let me just see what I can get out of it. I took a 200 hour course and it changed my mm. life. I became so much more confident in myself. I, you know, started to have more appreciation for myself and I learned how to center myself. So yeah, that, that passion definitely stemmed from just high school. My, my coach introduced me to it. Okay. Have you, um, at any point had any advice that you received from ex athletes that you think has been so has a massive impact on your career um i would say i would say a moment that i appreciated the most that's going to impact my career from here on out was at pre and um to Lou, she took me to the side at the hotel and she said congratulations and I was like, thank you. Because I, I watch you on YouTube all the time. Mm. <laughs> like, mm. I, yeah, like that. She's, you know, she's an OG too. So just to get that kind of recognition mm. from, you know, an OG, like that's, I was, that's going to, that inspires me now to just want to do as best as I can. Because obviously, like I have, I have eyes on me. I have people that are inspired by me. So what would that, um, so what would, 24 year old um tiana daniels say to 18 year old tiana daniels 18 year old first of all stop stop going to parties <laughs> that's one <laughs> leave the college parties alone <laughs> you don't need them but, um, i would no but for real though i would say keep it simple because when you start to overcomplicate things that's when you create your anxiety you get into depressed mode and you start to overthink. Just keep stuff simple. Tackle one task at a time and have fun. Yeah. Okay, this is my last question to you. So what, what with the rest of your career that you've got to come, mm -hmm. what thing do you want to achieve the most? Or is it you're taking it season by season? I would say that. Um, that like, like I just said, yeah. I want to keep things simple. Just taking it season by season. Um, appreciating everything that happens within those season, within the, the season and then grow from it from there. Um, of course, I would love to have longevity with track and field, but you know, that's not always the case. So I have to be real myself on that. Um, yeah. yeah, just so like, like, honestly, like you said, just keep it season by season. Okay. Tiana, how can people get in contact with you? Uh, follow me on Instagram. Or Twitter underscore Tiana D T E A H N A D. Um, yeah. <laughs> Tiana, thank you very much. Um, yeah, personally, I'm really, really happy to have you on. Actually, um, elite athlete, um, 24 years old. You're definitely gonna run 10.7 soon. Oh my gosh, it's coming. 10.7 <laughs> is coming soon. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Ashay, 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 let's keep that into existence. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. 10 yes. seven is coming soon. So, um, yeah, we really, really f um, thank you. Um, I think for me, the thing that stood out for me personally was just the sponsorship, but that was massive. And I think it's so important for our listeners to to see the other side of it. It's not just about chasing a sponsorship and, you know, bragging to friends and boosting their ego. It's um, it's just it comes at a it price. comes at a price yeah absolutely so yeah, yeah we really appreciate that yeah. um guys if you are a regular listener thank you please continue to share um if you are a new listener welcome aboard we've got a catalog 
of recording so please start from the very beginning guys until next time stay stay healthy stay blessed